Hey, what's up? You're watching The Sit Down. I'm DJ Sixsmith. Talking today to Imogen Poots. Coming to us live from London. Imogen, how you doing? I'm okay today, considering the circumstances we're all in. It's, it's all right. The sun is shining, whatever that means. So. <laughs> yeah, we're all trying to make sense of it right now. I'm in New Jersey. You're in London. There's sun outside, but life is kind of halted. And, you know, there's stuff coming out with TV shows and movies. But this must be a really weird time for you with a couple new things coming out, right? It is strange, definitely. And, um, you know, you start to think about things in a different light, especially things you've worked on and uh, certain projects fit this uh, scenario more than others in terms of what we're all going through and experiencing. And um, it's, it's eerily strange how on point something like Vivarium has turned out to be. Mm. Um, obviously we didn't uh, intend for a pandemic to sweep um, alongside its release, but that's what's happened. So um, yeah, it's, it's certainly strange. Well, why don't we talk about Vivarium? What was it like doing that movie? And now that people have all this time to hang out and be at home, what can they expect when they check it out? Yeah, well, hopefully, uh, hopefully people will feel catharsis and maybe through Vivarium they'll be able to um, feel less alone with the isolation. And um, there's certainly a lot of um, familiar scenes within the film that I think we're all experiencing now. Um, and I hope that they find a catharsis. I hope that um, it isn't too heavy. Um, I do think there's some dark, dark, dark humour in the film, but um, I've certainly found I've been gravitating towards films of a nature, of a genre nature and, and stuff recently. Um, but making the film was actually really wonderful and we shot it in Ireland and Belgium. Um, and I got to work with the wonderful Jesse Eisenberg, which was really cool and despite the intensity of the film we actually had a lot of fun making it so it was very really pleasure awesome. yeah. you've worked with a lot of great people in the past what was it about jesse that you really took to and what are some things you picked up along the way from him yeah well gosh jesse's got an amazing career i think he's um he's really unique and uh to me he's sort of like a 30s comedian you know he's um like from the 1930s not a comedian in the 30s he is even though he is that um he is a absolutely wonderful man and uh we've managed to work together three times which is really cool um and i've just loved him in many films i've loved him in the end of the tour and the double and then obviously he's done bigger stuff too but i just think he's an extraordinary talent and a great person to hang out with and we always laugh a lot like stupid things <laughs> stupid stupid humor but really fun that's really awesome. You mentioned a couple minutes ago just about picking a certain type of genre and kind of what appeals to you now. How did that change over time over the last couple of years? Yeah, it's interesting. It's interesting. Um, I always think it's a strange um, path you forge as an actor because you often get asked about having a plan and I don't ever really understand how you can have that in life anyway. Let there's, there's no way. Yeah, with a career, possible. right? Uh, <laughs> Yeah, there's like a Mike Tyson quote about being punched in the mouth. Mm. The plan to get punched in the mouth, and I guess that's what we're all going through. But, um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, in terms of genre, my taste has obviously changed and adapted and gone back and gone forward over the years. And genre is something that um, is ever interesting. It's always um, a reflection of what we're all experiencing, whether you choose for that to happen or not. Um, and I think it offers up great platform for female performance often too. Um, but I'm a big genre fan. I love psychological horror. Like the, the others is still the most terrifying film mm. for me personally. Um, and uh, I'm drawn to sort of stories like that, but not necessarily just like gratuitous violence. Right. <laughs> <laughs> not all the time. I'm just going to. So. Yeah, it has these parts that have some depth and also just to have some range to kind of explore some different places that you may not be able to go to with some other types of genres, I guess, right? Yeah, absolutely. I think so. And I think even the term genre has sort of expanded and extended. Mm -hmm. I think um, it's a very elastic uh, platform um, to try out ideas and uh, people are very, very responsive to it. There's a real inbuilt fan base who want you to succeed with it. 
And I think you really meet some extraordinary minds through working on genre film too. You, you meet some real characters and, uh, and I love it when people can dip in and out of it. And um, it's not, I don't think it's as um, confined perhaps mm -hmm. as, it, as it used to be, the idea of genre. Yeah, even the idea of platforms, right? That's pretty fluid these days. I mean, you're somebody that's done like a ton of films in your career, but you're going to be doing a TV show on HBO and you can kind of bounce back and forth now. So why don't you tell people what's coming up with, uh, with the new show? Yes, yes. Um, I was lucky enough to be a part of an HBO miniseries called I Know This Much Is True. And it stars the brilliant Mark Ruffalo alongside these extraordinary actresses like Juliette Lewis and Catherine Hahn and Melissa Leo and all these brilliant people. Um, and Derek C. on France helmed it, who was the mind and heart behind Blue Valentine. Um, so he's got a gorgeous sensibility with the camera and with characters. And uh, it was so cool. It was like a dream. It was a dream come true being part of that project. Um, and super fun to dip in and out of uh, someone else's story in that way. What was the hardest part of that experience for you? The hardest part? Well, the, the problem is Mark Ruffalo is like the kindest, <laughs> nicest person you'll ever right. meet. And yet we're in this really tumultuous, hard relationship. So we had to be really mean to each other. And it was kind of stupid because you do this like heart wrenching scene together. And then he's just so nice. Mm. So that was very difficult. Um, but in terms of the work itself, I just, I was pinching myself. I'd wanted to work with Derek Sue and France for forever. Um, so just to be there was, was really wonderful. Um, and I, I cannot wait to see it. I haven't seen it yet, but I'll be first in line. That's awesome. Who are some other people along the way that are like those bucket list people that you're like, wow, this is pretty dope that I got to work with this person or this oh, really cool person I got to hang out with? I think there are so many um, that I feel completely blown away to have worked with like the great Philip Seymour Hoffman mm -hmm. um he was just uh, an amazing man to be around um and then over the years you sort of you bump into folks along the way um you really get a chance to hopefully learn a lot from them um, we have a great our great actress Imelda Staunton in England who's a theater powerhouse. I got to work with her. She's absolutely extraordinary. Um, but there are some, yeah, there are some bonkers people out there. I'm kind of like <laughs> blanking on all of them, but I say that Mr. Hoffman was certainly a kind of earth shattering talent to be alongside in a scene. Which, which one was that for you with him? Remind it's me. called the uh, LA Quartet. The cast in that was obscenely good. It was like Catherine Keener, Christopher Walken, Oh, wow. Bill, um, Mark Ivanier, who's a wonderful actor, and yeah, it was it was pretty nuts actually. I was like 21 years old. What was I doing there? <laughs> Speaking of uh, the early days of your career, like what are some things you didn't know then that you know now, or just just biggest surprises about being an actor and kind of bouncing through the industry? Yeah, I I'd have to say that you think you know something, you know, just like life, you think you kind of have an idea and. Um, as to how something's going to be or pan out and you, ne you never know. It's kind of the ups and the downs and part of the whole surprise of this job. is It's the unknowability that kind of is addictive in that way. Um, and I suppose what I wanted to be doing perhaps when I was 21 is totally different to what I would like to be doing now because you learn more about cinema and you learn more about the world and you have your own experiences. Um, so I think it's sort of it's just a kind of long, dusty road and um, you, you're, you're on it to sort of hopefully make sense of the world. And if you're lucky enough, you get to change some things if, you, um, if, you, if, if your work reaches people in that way. Um, and the beauty of it is you bump into the same folks along the way too. So it's sort of, we all know each other till we're like 90. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's a pretty small world when you think about it and you've done a lot of cool projects like what about the Jimi Hendrix biopic like that seems oh I'm so Tell glad you that. that I love that I mean I got to work with Andre 3000 it was mm -hmm. it was ludicrous and we knew we'd get along because we both turned up the day one of rehearsal wearing denim matching denim overalls without even Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> And he was like, why am I dressed like a 23 year old girl? But um, <laughs> it was, it was really, really cool. I mean, again, I'm with Andre 3000 watching him 
he was learning how to um, play the guitar left-handed and he, uh, he, he went deep with that part as well. It really, really um, connected with him. And I loved playing Linda Keith, who was the Brit who uh, spotted Jimi Hendrix, according to law, um, according to our film. Um, and it was really uh, amazing working with our director and the rest of those actors. And because it's great working about something that you care about. And I, for a while there, there was like three years where all I did were like music biopics. <laughs> it was just like, I love, I love these people. Um, and yeah, it's such a, such a dream to get to work on something like that. And for those music biopics too, it's just fascinating to see it from a musical perspective, but also just from the human perspective. Like you think about Hendrix, like he was like a military family guy and then he like totally rebels. He starts doing his own thing. Like there's just so much to unpack when it comes to all these musicians. Totally. And it's interesting, the deconstruction of an icon or a legend. And it's really, uh, it's always a relief, I think, because you're like, oh, great. So they also kind of had to go to the bathroom and take a... <laughs> You know, like everyone's got that, that soul that's totally, um, it's an egalitarian nature to it when it boils down. It's really, it's really cool. Definitely. Also, I liked uh, uh, the one that you did with uh, Michael B. Jordan and uh, Zac Efron that oh, at the moment, yeah. right? Yeah, that was a fun movie, right? Yeah, I, I know. It's such a sweet film. And um, again, it was just like, we're all in our early 20s making that film in New York. I mean, it's like a recipe for a disaster. But it was, it was so much fun. And those guys were all absolutely lovely. No man has the manners that Michael B. Jordan had. His manners were like, obscene. Like he would run and open the trailer door for me. Oh my snow. gosh. I was like, who is You're this? Like, no one does this, Michael. Come on, man. You know what I mean? I was just like, wow, this is, this is great. But it didn't last. Um, but yeah, <laughs> it, was, it was super special working with those guys. That's and awesome. Girl, amazing yeah. Actors. You had a great cast for that one. What are some other things you'd still like to do? Because, I mean, you're just getting running with all this stuff, really. In terms of films that I've worked on? Just in terms of stuff you'd like to do in the future. Like, what else piques your oh, interest? Wow. Well, gosh, there are so many cool filmmakers um that's i guess where you sort of begin is you're like who would you love to work with in a, in a dream world and i'm a huge fan of kelly reichardt i think that her work is absolutely essential really the stories that she tells and the the actors that she works with i just think she's um she's an absolutely incredible uh filmmaker um and i i love david lowry i think he's really out there he did ghost story um, I think he's super wonderful. The Zellner brothers, mm -hmm. the Kimiko the Treasure Hunter and Damsel, they're amazing. The Safdie brothers. Yeah. The Safdie brothers are so interesting because I don't know if you've seen their stuff pre-Uncut Gems. No, I haven't seen their stuff pre-Gems. It's really cool. It's just, uh, their first ever movie is amazing and it's, it's, really, um, it's really cool to, and that's why I think this, this whole streaming uh, situation that we're now in in this day and age is, is awesome because you can just find anything yeah I feel like there was a time where you wanted a specific movie and I sound like I'm 80 but like, you're like <laughs> no it's true it wasn't that long ago it was like five years you're like where do I find this movie I have no idea where it is exactly you can't find there's still some you can't find anywhere it's like right. serious but um but just to be able to watch a filmmaker's work in that way is so cool that's, that's why I love that's Definitely. why I love streaming guys <laughs> <laughs> so what are you watching now anything good what am I watching? I'm watching The Jinx. I've never saw The Jinx. Oh, so wow. Okay. Watching that and um, I'm not Googling anything to do with it. See, I'm always a bit behind with everything. Mm -hmm. but I get Me too. Yeah. yeah. That's just what happens. Um, I'm watching The Jinx and Succession, which... Oh, Succession's great. Unbelievably good. That cast is yeah. next level. And just really that storyline. We're really fascinated with families that come from a lot of money and then just what's going on between those relationships. Like, it just, it never stops in, in terms of being a dream. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's seriously, uh, it's seriously compelling stuff. I absolutely am loving, loving succession. Definitely. Well, Imogen, really nice to talk to you. Uh, stay safe in London and uh, looking forward to checking out all your new stuff. Yeah, thank you so much. Be safe in New Jersey. <laughs>